Hey everyone, welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. We are back in East Vineland, New Jersey and on Kubota. That's right, Kubota Farm. And I was just going to wash up our cultiv our yeah, our cultivator here real quick. Actually, I'm not quite sure they're calling this a cultivator. It does stubble tillage is what we get from this thing. But let's go ahead and get it washed up. And I'm um, happy Monday to everybody. Hard to believe that this is Thanksgiving week already. It has snuck up on me at least. This has been a very quick summer it feels like. But I hope you're all having a really good week. Start of the week I should say. Had a good weekend, relaxing, enjoying weekend. Hope your favorite teams won, both college and professional. Mine did not. I had, uh, I'm had. i 0-2 for this weekend. But I'm also getting kind of used to that at this point, if I'm being honest. Um, actually, you know what? Let's not park that here. Let's park it down further. So the plan, at least the plan that I'm thinking, is we're going to go back and we're going to go plant canola on our north 40 field and I'll show you real quick here on the uh, crop calendar so the plan is canola can be planted in August and I'm hoping that if I understand correctly it's an 11 month I think it's an 11 month growth period on canola so She'll grow all around till next year, and then we will harvest our canola in June, turn right around, prep the field, and we will plant corn. That is my hope and plan, at least for that. I think it'll work out that way. If it doesn't, well, we'll have to deal with whatever, however it does work out. But I think that's the way it's going to work out for us. Um, I was actually looking for our M6 or 7. I always lose our M7. Where's our M7? Uh, that's our 8. That's our 6. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. That's where it is. Uh, we need to see. Do we have... Uh, we can fill up seed on this thing. Where am I at here? I'm all turned around. I'm discombobulated. Turned around and discombobulated. Let's go ahead and fill this thing up. Um, what did I say? Canola? I think that's right. We'll verify that once we get out to the field. But that's the plan, Stan. Uh, let's try and get under that a little bit better. I think I need to open the cover first. And that should fill our seed. Oh, there we go. And let's go on out to our... Guess what I'm calling the North 40? And we'll um, get started on planting out here. Keep moving forward here in August with our plans. Now... We've got that potato contract sitting over there just waiting for us to start. Um, and we can start that really at any time we want. Um, you know, depending on if we want to do more work here on the farm or hire a worker or whatever we want to do. Uh, canola is what we want. Let me just, I always like to double, triple check these things because I have made mistakes in the past that have been a little more painful. Canola sounds right to me. Let's throw down a headland here, maybe one or two headlands here, and uh, we'll get started. Fire up a cedar. Looking good, looking good. Looking good so far. And of course, with precision farming, we will follow this up with um, with some fertilizer. 
We could roll it too. We don't own a roller. I guess we could lease one. We could buy one. I don't really... Well, I shouldn't say that. I was going to say I don't really do much rolling, but I did on Elm Creek. Um, and there is a percentage bump for... A yield bump for rolling, so... Uh, maybe it'd be, you know, maybe it'd be worth doing. It'd be worth it if I didn't just go right over the same seed that I just did, too. Very nice. I'm going to throw one more headland down just to give us a little space here. And, uh... I'll tell you what, trees just block my view. Lower our cedar. See if we can get one more one more row down here. So this week being Thanksgiving, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I'm going to have to fill in that gap there. Not entirely sure how the recordings are going to go this week. Um, I might have... I might not have a... Friday Kubota. Probably will most, most likely not have anything on the weekend this weekend either. So it might be a short week for the channel um, this week. I will have a uh, throwback Thursday for sure so you can count on that but as far as Kubota goes um, I'm not I'm just not entirely sure what I'm going to do yet uh, what I'll have time for is going to be the is kind of going to be the the, um, the problem with work and then family things. Um, whoops. Just might not have time to throw an episode out every day. I see that this field is the one that kind of... So we're going to do that. We're just going to edge it out that way. Lock in here. And lower. And off we go. And I think this episode, we're just going to kick back, relax, do some seeding. Um, get as much of this field done as we possibly can. Not much to see from the inside view there, is there? Boy, even, even with that uh, leaning out to the right, this field really does swing out to the right quite a bit, doesn't it? That's all right. We'll fill that. We'll fill that in later. No worries there. Be nice to get a little bit bigger cedar at some point too. These these little jobs are a little bit time consuming. Oh, it looks like I forgot to come back and finish off our our edge there too, doesn't it? Let's see if we can get that taken care of. Be nice if I lowered the cedar. That would be helpful. There we go. So I hope you're all staying safe and warm and comfortable. I don't know, in your neck of the woods, if you've gotten bad weather like we have around here but it seems like across the country there's some pretty interesting weather patterns going on I seem to remember last year we're just going to cruise down to the other end and start over I seem to remember last year not having snow or any real um, amounts of snow until after the new year, if I remember right. 
um, certainly did not have this kind of snow um, this early on. Um, seems like, if I remember right, it was, I don't even know if we had a white Christmas last year, now that I think about it. I think we may have had an unseasonably low, we usually get more snow in February, like it seems like, around here than we do earlier on, but this year has proven to be very different, no doubt. Always nice to just watch the machinery at work. I have to look and see what our options are for cedars uh, here on the farm. If it would be worth to, if we stick with Kubota, uh, just to get a second one of these and have two running, could always do that. Uh, it'd be nice to get something a little bit more productive than this three meter job though is kind of how at least how I'm how I'm feeling about it let's get lined up Tell you what, with precision farming, seems like you definitely go through less of everything, you know, as you go along, which is really, really, really nice. I know that lime, you go through a lot of lime initially to get the fields, <coughs> excuse me, to get the fields uh, initially balanced out, but for the most part, precision farming is definitely a cost saver, that's for sure. And not only a cost saver, but I guess you do get a a bump too when you go to sell your crops as well, which is which is really kind of a nice thing there. Speaking of selling, I think we'll have a pretty good amount of money coming in um, later on this year or maybe early next year with all the silage that we were able to to get taken care of. And we've got some uh, crop to sell as well. So I think financially, we should be in pretty good shape. And we don't own anything to the bank, which is really nice. So any money that we have coming in is straight profit, which is sweet not owing the bank anything one thing i was thinking of though and i was watching a video today um, from disturbed simulations if you haven't had a chance to check out his channel it's pretty entertaining and he does some modding in fact i think he's got i don't know if he has anything on the giants in-game mod hub but he has put out a few mods usually they're kind of centered around um, the production side of things and he was talking about um, adding, like, for him, he had on his map, I think he's playing on Maypole. I think it's, I think that's right, Maypole. Um, Maypool or Maypole. But uh, from an immersive point, he was adding some farm equipment to one of the farms that, um, you know, was looking pretty empty, you know, because they just have sheds and you don't see any tractors or farm equipment. So he wanted to add some equipment to that farm, but he didn't want to. He didn't want it to be attached as ownership. He just wanted it there for visual. He can't use it, you know, anything like that. So it's not cheaty that way. It's just for looks. And that's kind of what I did with uh, adding the John Deere and the Kubota equipment over at Fred's store there. Only the way I did it was I'm using that. Um, program or that mod called farm manager that allows you to uh, park vehicles so that when you tab through vehicles and stuff you don't tab to them and they basically you know 
disappear a little bit. But the downside to that is um, technically I do own all of those vehicles. So they can kind of mess with your... I don't know if they necessarily really mess with your finances or not, but um, when you're in the shop looking at, you know, owned equipment and stuff, they show up there. You know, like if we look at the equipment that we own, um, you know, we don't own technically John Deere equipment, but there it is. And that's the stuff that's sitting at Fred's store. But the way he was doing it, uh, was he was actually going in and editing the game uh, the game save XML file and removing um, I'm sorry changing ownership of that equipment that he placed on that farm to kind of a non-existent or to the game or something like that I'm not entirely sure I have to rewatch it but I thought it was a really good idea because it gets the same uh, it does the same thing as what I'm doing, only it takes away that, you know, background ownership of all that equipment. And you don't have to worry about even messing with it or dealing with it um, because technically you don't own it. It's just sitting there for looks. I thought that was a um, pretty good idea. So I'm going to check that out. I might make some changes to the way um, I'm managing that as well on this map. I kind of preferred how he's doing it. Uh, for sure. It's a recent video, so if you check out Disturbed Simulations, um, he usually has some really kind of interesting um, ideas like that, you know, on ways to modify things. Um, he's He has a good video, I think one or two part series, on how to transfer game saves so that if you have a map update and you want to bring over your existing equipment and and livestock and all that stuff he goes over how to edit xml files and you know good ways to be able to start if a new if a map update requires a new game save um, he's got some good information on that i know i used to do that um, a while ago but you know i was a lot more I was a lot more into that, into editing XMLs and doing my own, I wouldn't say modding, but kind of modding and just being a little bit more interested in the in the background of how the game works and stuff like that and, and the innards of the game. And I think it's a lot of fun. And honestly, as long as you, you know, as long as you back up your, your game saves and um, you're careful about stuff like that as far as having backups, you're really not going to hurt anything. I mean, if worse comes to worse, you can just, you know, if you're on Steam, just verify the game files and, you know, off, off you go. Or if you destroy your save game, just, you know, make sure you have a backup and you can restore any issues that you, or problems you might have caused. But it's kind of fun to see how the game manages um, things like that in the background. Sometimes it gets... Pretty complicated. I, I'm not a coder. I never have done much coding uh, in my career. I dabbled in some, uh, I think it was some Visual C at some point. I also have done a lot of batch file coding and stuff. If any of you are familiar with batch files and stuff. I had a buddy that used to say, if it can't be done in DOS, it shouldn't be done at all. And <laughs> I don't know. You know, to him, you know, more power to him. I mean, nowadays, if we were all stuck in DOS, we certainly wouldn't be watching this video or playing this game. But, uh, you know, games used to be in DOS, and that's how you played them. And there were some good ones. There were some really good DOS-based games back in the day. I will say that. In fact, I think the original Doom was DOS. Um, I think the original Wolfenstein was DOS. Uh, for me, one of my favorites many years ago, um, uh, what was it? Um, Star Wars game, the um, TIE Fighter. That was a DOS game. I absolutely loved that game. You can still get that game on Steam, in fact. 
So if you're looking for an old school Star Wars game with just basically flying around fighting other, you're a TIE fighter fighting X-Wings and stuff like that, it's, it's pretty cool. It is. Very nice to have a joystick. Um, so if you have a joystick, you might want to try it out. You can usually pick it up pretty cheap on Steam sales too, uh, which is kind of nice. You can usually pick it up for, you know, like five bucks or something like that. So might be worth a might be worth a shot checking it out. I'm trying to think of what other old DOS games too. I I think everybody's at some point or another probably played. I forgot I put Headlands in here. I don't have to go so far, do I? I think everybody's probably played like, um, oh, uh, Oregon Trail. I had a friend. Um, they were friends of the family. And I remember going over to their house one night for supper. Um, I think they were fairly new friends of the family um, at the time. And they had, oh, we'll stay inside for a bit. And they had a, um, a son that was a little bit older than me, but they had a Mac. Uh, I think it was a, the Mac 2, if I remember right. It's the one that looks, you know, like kind of that stacked, almost like a, uh, it was a stacked Mac, you know, with the, the drive on the bottom, the monitor was all kind of the really early look of the iMac. And I remember checking that thing out and thinking how amazing it was because it was just so sleek and um, I don't know if my dad yet had a Tandy 1000 in the house yet but it just seemed better, smoother and the graphics most definitely the fonts and everything were just, you know, it was just superior um, to the IBM at the time and that was my first look into Oregon Trail and I just thought it was the bomb you know just how well made it was and the sound and everything was just so good and uh, the kid that lived there was kind enough to just let me absolutely you know own that thing for that night isn't it funny the things that we remember the, the things that, that our brains kind of keep you know for years and years i couldn't i couldn't tell you what i had for dinner last thursday but i can tell you but i can picture and i can see that mac and i can see playing oregon trail i even remember what we had for dinner that night and it was lamb with mint jelly and i rem and i think the reason i remember that is partially because i had never had it before because it was pretty fancy these people were I, I remember them being upper middle class at least, if not maybe even wealthier. But their house, you know, I just remember their house being really nice. It was big and, and really nicely decorated. And, um, the Mac and then the, the meal. And I thought, and I, and I can remember thinking that I was, I was terrified, you know, because it was lamb and mint jelly. And, you know, I'm like six years, well, I don't know how old I was, but... I wasn't that, no, nah, I was older than six. I would have been maybe 10, maybe 10 years old, 11. And um, never had it before. And thinking to myself, okay, this is a little bit weird. You know, mint, jelly, like jelly's what you put on toast. And, um, but I remember liking it so much. I thought it was just so delicious. And uh, yeah, it's just weird how the brain remembers things from so long ago you know and then how smells you know bring memories right back you can smell something and immediately it takes you to either a person or a place um, you know and stuff like that like pretty cool I don't know I, I the older I get the more I wish that I had better short-term memory um, and I don't know if it's short-term or quick recall but I do notice over the past year or two that um, that that immediately you know recalling something very very quickly looking for that word that you're looking for um, it seems like that's gotten harder for me but I also wasn't talking to myself on a YouTube video while playing a game so that might have something 
to my in my defense, that might have something to do with it um, as well. At least a little bit. Komoda's getting a little dirty. Cedar's starting to get a little dirty. Doctor, is it Doctor Octavius? I think I've mentioned that before. How this always reminds me of that dude on Spider-Man, that character on Spider-Man. I think that's his name, isn't it, Doctor Octavius, the Oct octopus Octavius dude? Man, these things look so complicated. These cedars. There's so many parts to them and stuff. Almost looks kind of almost like it's over engineered for what it is but there's got to be reasons for all of those you know for all of those joints that are there and those moving parts and everything and how precise they must make these you know it's got to be difficult to make a cedar that can precisely put down seed not only you know the right amount but the right depths with various types of uneven ground I was thinking about this the other day, and it's kind of weird, but I was thinking to myself, you know, if I was a farmer, and I was out seeding like this, right? I would, like, until I actually started to see growth, I would be just a nervous wreck. I'd be thinking, okay, did I remember, did I run out of seed and I didn't realize it? No, there's stuff that, you know, there's got to be something in the tractor that will tell me if I'm out of seed. Was there a hose that was clogged that wasn't injecting seed into the ground? You know, was there a nozzle clogged, or was this happening, or this happening? <coughs> Excuse me, and I, I feel like I would just be a nervous wreck until I actually started seeing um, plants being produced on my field. And I, I, uh, I can only imagine, you know, I, I suppose it's something you get used to more and more. Um, as you farm more and more and get to be more of a seasoned farmer, but I can't imagine, you know, just how how much um, stress a person would be under early on in their career as farming, you know. Which also then makes me wonder too, how many new farmers actually start farming every year? And not, you know, from, but, are starting the first generation of farming um, and not picking up from their family's farm. Uh, I know that there's a, a couple that I watch. I think they have a couple kids too. Um, they're tobacco farmers um, and I watch them occasionally on YouTube and they started from scratch. And I can only imagine, you know, the stress and uh, the feelings of you know, on knowing what's what's hap what's going to happen, or how well your crop's going to do, and all this stuff. So, but there is the upshot, which is you get to play with tractors and all this nice equipment. Even if it's not new and nice equipment, you know, just being out all day on a tractor, cultivating and seeding, just sounds very very enticing to me. It certainly sounds like it beats an office cubicle. It sounds like it's much, definitely sounds much better than an office cubicle and listening or trying to figure out the lovely issues of what is Windows and all the applications that run on Windows. So there's that too. So I think I'm gonna wrap up this episode of Kubota Farm. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll get this field uh, finished up seeding. Just looking at how much seed we've used and wow, that's like, 
Six percent? That's all we've used? That's crazy. That makes me want to go up right now and check. Yeah, our progress. Doing good. Looking good. I don't know why it wouldn't be seeding, but that seems like such a little amount that we've used so far. And I think our next, uh, when we back, when we come back to Kubota, uh, we'll probably end up, we'll have to get this thing fertilized and make a final decision on rolling, on whether or not we're going to invest in a roller or lease a roller or even bother to roll uh, our fields. And uh, then constantly be reminded of what's waiting for us right over here. <laughs> Our potato contract. Yeah. I know I talk bad about it, but I really don't dislike harvesting potatoes and doing potatoes that much. It's just, you know, you, you look at, um, you know, three meters and, uh, man, I know they make mods that with bigger heads on potatoes, harvesters and stuff, but, uh, yeah. Just a lot of work right there waiting for us, but it's also about 35,000 bucks waiting for us here too. So that inspires me to want to get it done. And I like these JCBs too. So, hey everyone, thanks again for joining me um, here on Kubota Farm once again. And I will see you again Tuesday uh, tomorrow. Yeah, for another episode back here on Kubota Farm. You all make sure to take care of yourselves. More importantly, let's take care of each other and I'll see you soon.